All right, so I am going to do a tech review today about the Microsoft Surface Book. And this is the one I believe from 2015, maybe 2016, but it's not a performance base from what I can tell. Now you might be asking me, why am I doing a tech review? I haven't done one of these in ages. In fact, I think the last one I did was my very first YouTube video, which happens to not even be online anymore. But this is something I bought recently in order for me to be able to, to produce content on the go. And it's an interesting little story about it and it's an interesting product. And considering the fact that it is 2022 at the time of this recording and all the other videos are talking about like buying this in 2017, 2019, maybe like 2020, 2021, but they didn't necessarily talk about it as to why you might do it. They just kind of did it as in they just did. I wanted to try to do both as best I could. The point was that I ended up not having internet at my home or at my office for a week. And then before that, the internet kept going out about 10 times, 15 times a day. I'm not even exaggerating. We had to reset our router like 15 times a day. And it was one of those things where there was just some issue with the internet company. It had nothing to do with what I, I had here. It had nothing to do with the actual space, but not having internet as a content creator was a big deal. I had this little mini transformer book that had two gigs of RAM, two core processor, and it barely did anything. I installed Linux on it to even try to give it a little bit more performance boost. Could barely even write a blog post, which is what I ended up having to do one day in order to get the swimming post out in the middle of the week. And so I saw this on Facebook Marketplace for $150. And I was like, okay, well you take a hundred. And he did. So this is the Surface Book. It's one of those devices that came out to really try to compete with the MacBook. The Microsoft Surface Lite actually, I think does a pretty good job with that. Some basic rundown, it's a 3000 by 2000 resolution. So it's three by two. So it's taller than most screens. What's kind of ironic is that I'm used to an ultra wide display. And so having it extra wide versus having it extra tall. So that actually took a little getting used to when it came to using like productivity tools. I still haven't done any video editing on here, but I am interested in doing that at some point. But I was able to install some of the graphics design programs and make the main point was being able to write outside of the normal setup. And so what's really interesting is you can take it off the hinge, the fulcrum, this whole little like bendy part right here that made waves whenever it first came out, people talk about it getting like dust inside, but I mean, my, my backpack's clean. I never really had that issue. I did have to take like an alcohol wipe and wipe the entire thing down because it was dirty after five years of use. But what's interesting is that it's a nice typable clipboard. I'm used to having a mechanical keyboard, clipboard. <laughs> I'm used to having a mechanical keyboard. And so that made things a little bit more different, but it still was very pleasant to type on. All right. so. With a nice high resolution screen, you would think, oh, it's gonna look great. Doesn't really game, which does kind of suck. Um, but it's probably a good thing, the fact that it's hardware limited not to be able to game because then I won't be tempted to actually try to do it. I did install Steam and Epic. Hopefully I can maybe get a game to work because it would be nice to be able to do something on the go. But again, I bought this for professional use. I guess I could use it as a business expense too, ironically. But the thing was, I just needed something that I could use on the go. And it works. It works great for that. I've taken it to the library, I've taken it to Panera, I've taken it to a coffee shop, and just sat down and wrote. And so, uh, some details of use. The trackpad is a decent size, not too small, not too big. I wish it was bigger, but considering the fact that this was the first generation model, it makes sense. But the, it's a glass touch, and so I've actually had pretty intuitive use with it, which, I mean, I've used a lot of laptops in my day. But being able to just scroll with two fingers, that was just something that I guess is more of a MacBook feature or some maybe, maybe it's commonplace nowadays. But when it came out, it wasn't as commonplace. And just being able to do that was very nice. I guess you can actually use three fingers too, which I just found out. The screen itself is touchscreen, so that helps out a little bit. It did come with a Surface Pen, well, I think one of the first generation models. On a side note, it uses a battery on the inside of the Surface Pen, but it's not a AAA. It's a quadruple A, and out of all of my years as being a techie, I've never seen one of those. I don't know where I put it, so otherwise I'd show you. But it's just one of those things. I was just like, that, that's weird. So I had to go and buy some new uh, batteries for it. I think it was dead. But playing around with the stylus, it was responsive, and like for an old device, I was surprised. The only time I ever had used a stylus before was with this Windows XP computer tablet. It was like a laptop that was a tablet from back in 2002. It was a really old device, but it was professional, so it lasted a long time, and it had a stylus, and it was pretty cool. But yeah, 
that was just, I digress. Beano uses this in tablet mode. It was kind of nice for like YouTube videos, something like that, but I, honestly, I might as well just keep the base on so I have the extra battery. So I didn't really use that as much. I wonder if I would use this more in the sense of like as a drawing tablet or something. There's something like that, but beyond that. So it isn't the performance base, which means there's no discrete GPU inside the base, which I'm very surprised about because I thought it would have that in there. But I checked the device manager. All it has is the internal uh, Intel graphics. Maybe it's because it's the i5 model and it's not necessarily the top end. I thought maybe the i7 only had it, but I'm pretty sure some people said that i5s had it too at least a different version, but it has eight gigs of RAM, which honestly I think is probably what saved me comparatively to the like little mini laptop that I had. And I was actually very surprised. It's a dual core. And most dual cores I've ever really used have been kind of not that great. And mainly because I've just I've been so used to octa cores for the past decade that going down to a dual core seemed kind of like too much. Like I, I would think I at least need a quad or something like that, but no, it has enough performance to actually use it um, it has the magnetic little charger here, which I guess you can also use for some kind of connectors as well, but it's been very convenient just to be able to put the charger on and just leave it and not have to worry about it. A mini display port, which honestly, I don't think I'd ever really would use. I wish there was a USB type C so I can use my dock that I have in order to use like, HDMI. And then uh, once again, a couple more USB ports. I guess at the time, like having three USB ports was a big deal, but honestly, I'd much rather have one of these be USB Type C. To be honest. Like, it doesn't even have to be Thunderbolt, just Type C. And an SD card, which I thought was pretty good, considering this is a professional gear. I don't have a fancy camera to really use for it, but yeah. And then the Windows Hello feature was actually very useful. I had Windows Hello for a very short time on my desktop because of the Xbox Connect. I was using that camera for a while, and then I upgraded to the stream cam. But the thing was, the Kinect was really bulky, took up a lot of like the wires. I can't tell you, I've had I've had so many devices over the years and the wires coming out of the Kinect, I had to connect it to another device. It had to have two different wires coming out of that and they were thick, chungus wires, this didn't work. But it was kind of cool to connect on the Xbox One X. It was kind of worth it there. I'm gonna leave the video here. I just wanted to make a quick review of the Microsoft Surface Book version one, especially since like I've been using it for a week or so now, and it's been actually really helpful. And this is what, seven years old now at this point, maybe six years old, depending on which version I, I, I didn't, there was no information on the listing or something like that. And so I had to go with what the guy told me and what I looked up on the device manager and I think it's just the original mo model. And maybe a mid range. I think he must have upgraded the SSD and uh, I hope it's an SSD in there. I think it is. Um, he must have upgraded the SSD and a RAM because it doesn't seem to be stock. But other than that, it was base. And it's like, okay, well, it's good enough. So hopefully that might help you too. Maybe you'll see one on your listings and your local marketplace as well. Cheers and bye.